John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. Now remember, what were the first words of Genesis chapter 1? What were those first words? In the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning and what was the next word? God. Now notice what John does in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. It says, in the beginning, there's the same three words, that's how he begins his evangelion. In the beginning was the what? The word, the logos. Notice what he says about this word, this logos. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was, what's the next word there? God. Notice verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were, what's the next word? made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. What John is doing here is he, is he is drawing on that powerful, sublime language of Genesis 1, and he's saying that Jesus was actually the vehicle, the conduit through which God created. Notice that again in verse 3. It says, all things were made, what's that word there? Through or by him. So Genesis 1-1 affirms that God is creator and John 1-1 affirms that God created and the conduit or the vehicle, the mechanism through which he created was Jesus Christ. Notice here on the screen with me, God was the creator, but when he created, it was through Jesus Christ. It was what, everyone? Through Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you remember there in Genesis chapter 1, uh, the first two verses, it said, And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Not only was the Father involved in creation, not only was the Son involved in creation, but the Spirit was also intimately involved in the act of creation. And so you have all three members of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together harmoniously, synchronously to create the heavens and the earth. Are you with me, yes or no? Yeah. Powerful. Now you're still there in John chapter 1, and notice with me verse 10. John chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, he was in the world, this is speaking of the incarnation of Jesus, he was in the world, and the world was made, what everyone? Through him. There it is again. And the world did not know him. Verse 11 must be one of the saddest verses in all of the Bible. It says, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. What is John trying to do here at the beginning of his gospel? He is, he is affirming, number one, that God is creator. Number two, he is affirming that the Word was with God and that the Word was God. And number three, he is affirming that that Word, that Logos, Jesus Christ in the flesh, was the creator, the instrument through which God created in the beginning. Now, let's continue to unpack this. The significance here is very important, and I want you to go with me from John to the other significant book, one of the other significant books written by the same author, and that's the book of Revelation. Go with me to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Now, if we had time, and I wish we did, we could go into great detail in Revelation chapter 4 about what's taking place here. If you read Revelation chapter 4 through, you will note that the word that comes up over and over again in that chapter is the word throne. Is the word what, everyone? Throne. throne. And the, the whole context of Revelation 4 revolves around the throne, the significance of the throne, and him that sits on the throne. It, it occurs a number of times, I think even more than 10 times. The throne, the throne, the throne, the throne. Now, what I want you to notice is beginning in verse 9, it says, Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the, what everyone? Throne. throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down and worship him who sits on the throne, throne and, wor and worships him who, who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. throne, saying, now notice what they say. In verse 11, why are they, why are they worshiping? Why are they, why are they adoring and giving honor and glory to him who sits on the throne? What is their reason and rationale? Notice verse 11. You are worthy. You are what word, everyone? Worthy. worthy. Take that word worthy and put it on a shelf in your mind because we're going to come back to it in just a moment. The reason they're worshiping, the reason they're giving honor and glory and thanksgiving to this God that sits on the throne is that he is worthy. Now, we might ask a legitimate question. What makes him worthy? Notice this in verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for... The word there means because... Because you... What, everyone? Amen. Created all things. You created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. 
Now, a quick question, very easily answered here. According to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11, why are those multitudinous, uh, that multitudinous throng worshiping him who sits on the throne? Why are they worshiping him? Because he's worthy, and what makes him worthy? He was the creator. Now, think about this for just a moment. If Adam had never sinned, if Eve and Adam had not been beguiled by the serpent and they had, had lived in that Edenic environment, a perfect God and perfect communion with a perfect people, and sin had not ever entered into this planet, and say that we are still, we're here now, we're alive, we, we are the descendants of Adam, but not the, not the sin degenerate sons of, Adam, sons of Adam, we are living in a sinless world. Now think about this for just a moment. Would we still worship God? Yes or no? Would we still give praise to God? Would we give honor to God? Amen. Why? Because he's, you hit the nail on the head. Because our, he's our creator. Why do the angels worship God? Because he created them. Friends, think about that for just a moment. If sin had never come into the world, we would still worship God. We would not worship him, though, as our redeemer, because redemption would be unnecessary. We would worship him as our creator, and he would still be worthy. Are you with me now?